slugs in the garden can be problematic devouring seed starts and mature plants that you've invested your time in every single gardener is going to have to deal with them at some stage but they can be awkward to deal with because of their numbers and because of the sheer fact that they tend to feed during the night or only on rainy days in this episode i'm going to give you some proven methods to control those slugs that actually work I'm Tony O'Neill and this is UK Here We Grow and on this channel we deal with all things gardening, poultry keeping and beekeeping. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified each time I release new content just like this. Unlike snails, slugs don't have a shell on their back, instead they have a small saddle like plate called a mantle. Because they don't have this shell, they tend to feed primarily at night time or on rainy days when they are protected from the sun. During the daytime, they tend to hide away under rocks and in moist locations. Now, this makes it easier for the gardener because it allows you to use methods to trap slugs in the garden. Now, using the tips within this video and a little patience, you can soon have a bed of lettuce like this in your gardens without the worry of slugs coming in and devouring it. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. We do not want to eradicate slugs entirely from the garden. Instead, we just want to remove them from areas that we're growing our food in. Because slugs and snails are very beneficial in the garden. They are food for birds, frogs, newts, lizards and all types of slow worms and things like that, hedgehogs. So we really don't want to get rid of them all because we want to encourage that wildlife into the garden. They will control a lot of them for us but we can control them in our growing beds because let's face it none of us want slugs in here. So the slug control methods that we will use here can be utilized in specific areas as discussed and this will allow you to either get rid of the slugs or kill them in this particular area but we can allow them to be in other areas of the garden where they can thrive and which will help to feed all sorts of other wildlife that we should be encouraging into our gardens slug method number one now bringing wildlife into the garden is a really good thing as we've already discussed. Loads of animals eat slugs and snails. So adding a small pond like this will really help to bring in those animals which can then help you to control the slug population through other areas of the garden. So a pond will bring in loads of animals like birds, frogs, toads, newts, hedgehogs, slow worms, because most animals will require water at some point. Now when designing your pond, it's really important to have a beach section like we have here, because if anything falls into the pond, it needs to be able to get out of that pond. And by having a gradual beach section that basically comes from here back, then any animal that falls in here can get out without any issues at all and also it provides a landing space for smaller insects to be able to come to the pond as you can see here we got insects flying all over the place now I have an older video quite an old video on this pond how I made it and I'll put a link for that in the description below slug control method number two now we can trap slugs in the garden by placing some rocks or upturned planks tin sheeting or even plastic pots because as we've already discussed slugs don't have a shell on their back so they hide away during the day so by providing these areas for them they will go under there it keeps in the moisture for them and it makes things much easier for us to lift those pots or, or stones or whatever it is and take the slugs away they are congregating for us to make our lives easier so we can remove them in large numbers because they congregate in these areas making life easier for us now another tip is to place upturned grapefruits or orange skins because of the moistness there and the thickness of the skin it keeps those areas cool and slugs love to congregate under those slug control method number three now we continue the trapping thing with 
beer traps. Now these can be as simple as just a bowl sunk into the ground or half a bottle, something like that. And they can be more elaborate like shop bought versions like these tents or even you could cut holes out of bottles and even design some that will be incorporate a lid that keeps the rain out. Now, if you do decide to do these open bowl stuff, put a tile, a ridge tile over the top of it because this will keep out the rain out of your beer and will also keep that area shaded and cool. Now, a top tip here, don't use expensive beers. Just your local supermarket brand beer will be fine because it's the hops and the east smell that attracts the slugs. The slugs will fall into this beer and they will drown. Now, if you've used slug traps before, you will have seen this liquid and sometimes it can get a little bit smelly, but don't throw it out because it can be used in the very next method. Slug control method number four, that's nematodes. Now, nematodes are the slug's arch enemy. There are thousands and thousands of species of nematodes and some are good and some are bad. There is one species that absolutely annihilates slugs. So if you're treating a specific area, it will kill those slugs. Now, there are products on the market called Nemaslug, and these are a nematode that is suspended in a clay base, and then you simply add water to that. Nemaslug can get very expensive, especially if you have a large garden to be able to look after. So a few years ago, I made a video that will show you exactly how to produce your own nematodes at home. In fact, this system worked so well that I've really struggled to find any slugs in my garden to make this video. I've had to go to other friends' gardens in order to find what I need for this video. Slug control method number five. Now, all too often, I see loads of gardeners throwing handful upon handful of those blue slug pellets all over their food and gardens. Now, these are chemically produced, and not only are they bad for your garden, yourself, and the environment, they're also bad for the animals that you've brought into the garden, because they not only kill the slugs, they then kill the animals that eat those dead slugs. So please guys, don't use those blue slug pellets. Over the past few years, wool pellets have been introduced, and these can be quite effective. Now, Studies have shown that, like human beings, slugs don't like the itchiness of the texture of the wool. So these can be laid down to really good effect. Slug Gone is a product name for one such group of these pellets and they are a compressed wool and they can be laid down around plants and when they're watered, they spread out like a mulch and they last a really long time. So this is a really good way to control the slugs. So use the wool pellets if you're gonna use pellets. Don't use those blue chemically based pellets, folks. Slug control method number six. Now, if you have a container garden, then stick on copper tape can be a really good thing to use, but this won't be enough on its own. Simply run two lines of this copper tape around and then add a nine volt battery to that. Literally one wire going to each of the bands here. Now, what this does, it puts a circuit through each of these bands so that when the slug climbs over the first band, it won't feel anything. But as soon as it touches the second band, it creates the circuit and that sends a small shock through to the slug, which turns them away from your precious plants. And this is really good if you've got container gardens or raised beds. You can simply run loads of this right around a single bed or a bed in the polytunnel and connect it up to a single nine volt battery. And the great thing is these batteries will last for a good year, no problems at all, because the only time energy is used is when a slug makes contact with both levels of the copper tape. It's a fantastic way to control slugs in 
uh, containers. Now it's important to note that this method relies on the fact that you know if there's any slug eggs in the compost that you're using. If you're using your own compost it's likely to have slug eggs in it and then you may be keeping them in rather than out. So bear that in mind but if you're using a shop bought compost that got very hot then the likelihood is that there'll be no eggs in it anyway and you'll then be able to use that method really well so a few more tips for you while i'm here as bonuses avoid using mulches like hay and straw instead use things like compost and leaf mold and avoid just overhead watering everywhere instead use drip irrigation because that limits the amount of water that is around the area which is saturated and also another tip on watering water in the morning rather than the evening and that way the soil has time to dry the surface out before the evening when the slugs are coming out and that way they're less likely to climb over the dry soil instead going to patches that are wet so one other tip for you is to ensure that you keep your ground nice and clean any decaying leaves on the bottoms of plants remove those take the weeds away from around them because these are all hiding places for the slugs and it's like opening the buffet doors and you can then take all of this sort of waste material and put it on the compost now talking of compost don't set your salads close to your compost bins because slugs love compost heaps and that way they literally got to come out of the compost eat, eat your lettuce and then go back in so keep your crops away from the compost heap if possible now if i had to pick two of these methods then i would pick the pond method and the nematode method and the reason for that is the wildlife that i'm going to attract to the garden will do the bulk of the work for me and the nematodes i can put in a specific area just to treat those areas and that would be even better for me again now you may choose uh, different methods to use in your garden so question of the day which methods would you choose and do you have any others to add to the community so that we can all learn together put them in the comments section below now if you've enjoyed this video guys please give it a thumbs up let's see if we can get a thousand thumbs up on this video and once you've done that share it with your friends and if you've got value from this video then don't forget that you can subscribe here and when you've done that you can view the rest of the videos right here i'm tony o'neill this is uk here we grow and remember folks you reap what you sow i'll see you in the next one bye bye